Hey guys, Capper here. Today we're going to talk about our Project 211 investment farm that we just sold here a few months ago. And I'm going to just cover all the questions that have been asked. So let's just get started. Um, why did we buy it? I was antsy. I wanted something to do. Um, I wanted an investment and I wanted a challenge. So with those things in mind, we started looking for a piece of ground and Project 211 was a 211 acre parcel of Southern Illinois ground. And when we found it, it was in a CRP Conservation Reserve Program. Um, of the 211 acres, there was 176 acres in the CRP program. So the 176 acres that was in the CRP program, which basically is a government program that pays you so you don't farm the land, it's for conservation. Um, there was 160-ish, give or take, that was in grassland CRP, which means you are responsible to have it mowed generally once a year, worst case biannually, um, every other year. And the property was rough. It was out of compliance just a couple of years ago. And we, turned, it, we found out that it wasn't even yet in compliance, even though we bought it, it was supposed to be. So the previous owner then had to bring it back into compliance and he had to re-mow everything and re-drill all of the CRP, the, the cool season, planting of a grass legume mix they call it it's clover and other cool weather grasses so uh, I then kind of dove into the CRP program and I looked at it and I thought there could, there needs to be some changes here first of all I realized I got in a little bit too deep on this one but once you get started you can't just like try to get rid of it right away you'll lose your you'll lose your behind if you do that so anyways, I changed the CRP program because when you transfer ownerships, you have the opportunity to change it. So I took and made 85 acres of it in very strategic locations. I, I turned it into a loblolly pine planting. And there was a bunch of reasons I did that. Um, the first reason was because the roughest ground that was really steep and really, really hilly where you're actually at risk mowing it, I planted that in pine planting so that I would never have to mow that again in the future. Secondly, looking ahead in the future, the contract is good for 10 years, but when the contract re-ups right now, tree planting CRP programs are given priority above grassland CRP. So I was also looking ahead at when this comes to renew, because you're talking about $35,000 a year on the CRP, no, I'm sorry, it was $28,000 a year on the CRP program. You could lose that just like that if they don't re-up you in 10 years. So that was another part of the strategy. If it was half tree planting, you would have a huge priority and bump up to the front. And then lastly, it was going to really increase the value of the land for its usability. In other words, it would create cover, especially for deer and wildlife. Because once you do the tree planting, then you don't need to mow it. You don't need to do anything. You just you plant your trees. They okay it and they say, yep, it's good to go. And then you just let it grow, basically. So within one year, especially, well, so within a year to two years, you're gonna have massive thick cover that the deer are gonna just love. And, and there's proof of that by the deer that the guys shot um, who hunted it last year. Um, we ended up leasing it out. We got a nice return. I think we leased it for, 8400 so in addition to the 27,000 which I'll get to that in a minute 27,000 on the CRP we also got 8400 for the uh, deer lease but I had to take six acres out from the 176 I took six acres out to plant food plots now normally in CRP programs they allow you to plant up to 10 percent in food plots in a normal crp plan but for whatever reason whoever wrote this one 
This CRP did not allow any food plots. So I had to actually take out, it's, it paid $162 an acre. I had to actually take that out and lose uh, whatever 162 times six, it was about $1,000. So we lost $1,000 a year by taking those future food plots out, but it really improved the saleability of that land, which is evidenced by the fact that we were able to sell it after a little bit over a year. So the changes that I made then, um, I went in there and I took the six acres, I had them strategically divided up into six different food plots. Three on one side of the main crossing, which was a creek that divided it, and three on the other side. So if a person ever wanted to subdivide it later, it's already divided into two quadrants, if you will. But then the tree planting strategy, I also put down the center of it, which kind of divided it into four quadrants. So now the only ground that was left to be mowed was the best ground. It was the flattest hilltops, and it was only 85 acres, give or take, as opposed to 160. So all of this working together in concert did well for us it was still too expensive for us definitely uh, we pushed it um, but we did okay i mean just to get our money back in a year first of all that's an accomplishment we probably made enough to pay for megatron 2.0 so we reinvested that in of course that piece of equipment which by the way um i could probably flip that and make a really really good profit but that's not the point here so anyways, with 2.11, it just became too much. As soon as I realized I was in way too deep, um, I, I couldn't give up at that point. You, I mean, you have to finish your strategy with land management if you want a chance to sell it and to get your money back or make a profit. So I put two deer towers there. I put four or five watering holes in um, next to each of the food plots in different areas and I made six permanent food plots so that by the time a year went by, um, amazingly, this thing had completely flipped around and now it was all set up and ready to go for someone just to walk in the door for a turnkey operation. All the hard work was done. So we're thankful we were able to sell it. We made a little bit on it, which was just a bonus. I mean, it was just too much on our plate. Uh, but the bonus is we also get another check at the end of the year for about 10,000 bucks added to what we've done because the CRP contract was prorated. So it's 27,000 a year. Um, I think we're getting whatever, four or five months worth because of the date we sold it. So that'll be a nice little Christmas bonus come the end of this year. And obviously now, one of the other reasons that prompted me to sell 211 sooner was the things that are going on here in Illinois that are also pushing us towards Kentucky. Um, I had some dealings that were very, very, uh, how do I even describe it? Um, to me, very disturbing, some dealings I've had here in Illinois. And I hope to one day be able to, to disclose all that. But not only that, but now with all the politics going on and the laws that they're ramrodding here in Illinois, um, you know, being a former Marine, being in combat, working the streets as a police officer to protect our rights, whether anybody likes them or not, I take it kind of personal. And to see our rights being just taken away by people who don't respect the law. I mean, this isn't about politics, okay? It's not left, right, none of that stuff. I'm just telling you, A, we have them in the Constitution, and B, I fought to protect them. And matter of fact, I've received some injury because of that from the Persian Gulf, from the Gulf War. So anyways, those things together kind of prompted me to say, look, if we can get rid of 211, find a buyer, let's get rid of it 
and let's start looking ahead to the future. So what the future holds, we don't exactly know at this point, except that we are planning on buying Kentucky. We still don't know the acreage yet. We should have it any day now. Um, today is the 21st, I think, of May. And I just got an update that they had to go reshoot a couple things today just to tighten up, which is common. They'll go and shoot it and then they'll compare the deeds and that and, and sometimes they'll need to reshoot different landmarks. So unless something really turns bad with the survey, we should be buying the Kentucky land and then kind of starting all over basically, but with a little different forward looking objective. So thanks for all the support. Um, it's really nice to have a family, an extended family here on YouTube and stay tuned we'll see what comes next you just i don't even know what's coming i mean i don't have a playbook i do and i don't um, i wing a lot of things but when i wing things there's still a plan a b c and d in mind you know whatever the topic is so we're gonna have some fun so thanks for being on board we'll see you on the next go around capper out